I'm extremely frustrated on my guitar journey right now. I feel like I'm practicing quite a lot. I'm putting in all the work, but at the moment I don't really see any kind of significant progress. Maybe it's simply not meant to be for certain guitar players. If this message that I recently got in my Guitar Academy on Patreon resonates with you just a little bit, I have some amazing news for you today. Because if you're feeling stuck with your guitar progress, you're not quite sure what to do to improve, and you don't see the results that you're after, even if you're putting in the time, in most cases that's not your fault. It it usually just means that you're working on the wrong exercises. Because there are tons of outdated and ineffective guitar workouts and exercises out there that are nothing more than a waste of your precious time. So to help you as much as I can, I want to give you four exercise concepts with this video that are extremely practical. So no boring mechanical chromatic exercises. These four amazing exercise concepts feature the most important guitar technique topics all players should work on every single day. And here's the first extremely powerful one right away. <laughs> So this first exercise might look a little bit tough, but I promise it's much easier than it seems. And it immediately addresses the number one guitar practice mistake that most players make when they want to improve their technique. Because let's say you want to work on your alternate picking technique. You would usually just have a practice block that features multiple alternate picking exercises like running through scales. Then you would move on to the next practice topic that could be legato, so hammer-ons and pull-offs for example. Then you move to the next, maybe sweep picking. And of course, that's a good way of developing those techniques. But here's where it all falls apart for a lot of guitar players. Once they start working on actual guitar solos, so very practical things, not just exercises that are completely separated. <laughs> Tons of aspiring technical guitar players not only sound a bit robotic because they never work on their vibrato and string bending, they can also sound quite clunky because they never really practice switching between different techniques in their daily routines. So for this exercise I prepared for you today, I'm working with the very common A minor arpeggio shape. But to make it more interesting, I'm starting with E on the seventh fret and I'm hammering on to A on the 12th fret on the A string. Then just like with sweep picking, I'm playing C on the 10th fret on the D string. But here's where it gets interesting. For the G string, so for that hammer on from E to G on the 12th fret, I'm using my middle finger to pluck the string, which makes it easy for me to really speed up this arpeggio. And it's not only just a cool way of playing it, it's also pretty cool phrasing wise, because I can really choose to accent that string plug if I want to, it will sound a little bit different. I'm continuing that hybrid picking approach for the entire first arpeggio, which makes it really, really cool in my opinion. Then I immediately go into legato to finish the line. So just one upstroke here at the end on the B string. For the rest, I'm just working with hammer-ons and pull-offs and a slide in between. And just in that first measure, I have to work with hybrid picking. There's a bit of an economy slash sweep picking approach in there as well. With legato, slides, hammer-ons, pull-offs. So a practical line like this makes for an amazing daily workout because it's simply not so stiff with the application of different techniques. Because in the second measure, I'm switching to alternate picking only with a really interesting pattern. In the third measure, I'm completely focusing on legato so on my hammer-ons and pull-offs and I also kind of utilize a sweep picking approach and then in the last measure I work on my alternate picking again with interesting string transitions. Now the second exercise I have for you today is definitely the most important one because it addresses one of the biggest weak spots when it comes to pretty much all guitar players. Just one very important detail before we continue. I made a brand new guitar technique practice package for all of my awesome members on patreon.com burn. This one comes with the most important daily guitar technique practice topics. You get very slow fundamental play along videos and and also very fast ones that will challenge you to break out of your comfort zone. And if you join my online guitar academy today, you also get access to 12 full guitar technique courses, five music theory courses from the basics to more advanced and really interesting stuff, and four home recording courses so that you can finally dial in a killer guitar tone at home without breaking the bank. We just opened some new limited slots for this month, so just click the link in the description or in the first comment down below, patreon.com burn. Check out if there's still a slot available for you. And if you need my personal input on your guitar technique, make sure to go for one of the limited slots in the personal coaching tier. You'll get access to the secret VIP Facebook group. I log in there every single day. So I will help you out as much as I can over there. But now here's exercise number two. <music> So 
as I mentioned, the second exercise revolves around one of the absolute biggest weak spots that most guitar players have in their picking hand technique. Because let's be honest, when we are working on alternate picking, the notes we are playing in the exercises are usually very close together, so next to each other basically, because most of the time we're just running through scales. And it's great to develop hand synchronization and speed, but once most guitar players have to play something quite fast with alternate picking that involves a lot of uncomfortable string skipping and unusual patterns, it usually sounds like this. <laughs> so quite terrible. Because with a lot of fast and actually technically quite proficient players, there's the issue of the wrist not really working that much. Because when you play very linear patterns quite fast, you actually get away with only using your arm sometimes. <laughs> But once I have to spread out my alternate picking motion across all the strings and I try to do that like this without activating my wrist. Yeah, I get really, really messy results. I don't feel in control of the string transitions at all. So this exercise I have for you today is not only very musical, it sounds pretty amazing. It's also perfect for developing absolute picking control, no matter the awkwardness of the string transitions, because you're just playing one note per string and that's so much harder than it looks. You will find out when you try it for the first time, because in order for this to sound nice and clean, you really have to be in control of your picking motion, because once you touch any surrounding strings while you're transitioning you will get all this unwanted string noise that sounds absolutely horrible and in my personal experience you can only play this exercise correctly at very fast tempos if your wrist picking motion is already activated so if you're tensing up or you feel a little bit stiff when you're playing certain alternate picking patterns or you feel like you're often getting stuck between the strings and it just feels awkward when you try to play certain lines that is the exercise you should be working on and as you could see it's also pretty great for your fretting hand control because you will have to mute the strings so that you don't get overlapping notes so easily one of the most helpful exercises I ever shared on this channel. That's what I currently do before I hit the stage because it's a great warm-up for the picking hand especially. Now let's move on to exercise number three. Alright, so this exercise is one of the best ones I have for you when it comes to working on timing and rhythm. Because when most guitar players think about timing exercises, they naturally think about rhythm guitar stuff, but timing is equally important and dare I say maybe even more important when it comes to lead guitar, because it doesn't matter how fast you can shred. If the notes that you are playing are not perfectly in time, you will always sound like a beginner. So with this exercise that I made especially for you, the cool twist is, once again, it sounds pretty great. And it's based on one of the biggest and most practical timing challenges that we face all the time as lead guitar players. And that's switching between different note values flawlessly. So you're starting out with four alternate picked notes, just four sixteenth notes, quite easy. But then you immediately have to switch to eighth note triplets and really be in the groove with those. And to make it even more challenging, you also have to switch to a different technical approach. So first you're working with alternate picking and then with hammer-ons and pull-offs. And then you're ending with four sixteenth notes. And the tricky thing with the end of this phrase is that the four sixteenth notes start with one note on the D string and then three notes on the G string. And usually when you're working with triplets, you're always working with three notes per string. And when you're working with sixteenth notes, you're either working with two notes per string or maybe with four notes per string. So this pattern that you move through the scale is actually a little bit harder than it looks and sounds. Because with these exercises you always want to be in time right after you switch to that next group. And I guarantee you when you try this for the first time, just do a click, you will always drag or rush because you're going from a faster note value into a slower one. And let's be honest, when we are practicing, we're usually just playing patterns in triplets. <laughs> or 16th notes exclusively. But we are rarely focusing on awesome exercises like this one, where you actively have to switch between two different note values, so two different rhythmic groups, and this will really tighten up your lead guitar playing. I can promise you that. And here's a really fun one. This is exercise number four. <laughs> All 
right, so this one might look a little bit easier in concept when you compare it to some of the previous ones, but it's actually really tricky. And if you looked closely enough at the picking hand, you actually saw what this is all about. So I was just playing through a scale. I started right here on B, on the seventh fret on the E string. So if I see that as my root note, this would be the B Locrian scale, could also be the second position of the A minor scale. And when I played through it for the first time, I was working with economy picking. So instead of always playing down, up, down, up, I was playing down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, and so on. And when I was turning the pattern around, it was up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, and so on. But then the second time I'm playing through the exercise, I'm switching to alternate picking. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and so on. Here's why it's incredibly important to work on this exercise. If you're like most guitar players, you have one clear preference when it comes to one of those techniques. A lot of players in the personal coaching group on Patreon naturally develop their economy picking. So they are very used to playing like this. And every time they want to practice alternate picking or work on their alternate picking skills, they often fall back into this picking style because that's what feels natural to them. And there are also some players like me who always naturally gravitated to alternate picking. So in my case, I really had to sit down and learn the economy picking approach. But the thing is, both of these techniques are really, really cool. And in my personal opinion, you shouldn't just focus on one of them. So this exercise is something that I'm working on personally at the moment. I want to have one exercise where I'm going back and forth between those two approaches. And my goal with this exercise is making them feel as similar as possible. What I mean with that is that a lot of players develop an alternate picking technique that maybe looks like this. <laughs> and then an economy picking technique that looks completely different and feels completely different. And naturally that will make it very, very, very hard for you to effortlessly switch between those two different playing styles. So by running through scales, first with economy picking and then with alternate picking or the other way around, I have a direct comparison between those two techniques and my picking hand, how it feels like, how it looks like, also how it sounds like. And with a simple exercise like this, you will effortlessly get better at both playing styles, which is awesome. All right, my friend, if you're ready to to take your guitar technique skills to a professional level in the fastest way possible, simply download the brand new guitar technique practice package on patreon.com slash burnt. You can find the link in the description and in the first comment down below. As I mentioned earlier, in addition to this new awesome practice package, you also get immediate access to 12 full guitar technique courses, five incredibly helpful and practical music theory courses, and four home recording course programs. So if you're still not part of my online guitar academy by now, give it a try today. See if there's some slots available for this month. Just click the link down below. I'm waiting for you inside. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Greetings from Vienna and bye bye.